Straight ahead on 12 News, campaign promise fulfilled. What Robbinsdale's mayor is doing to kickstart a city project. Then remembering a former Brooklyn Center mayor. At the heart of Dean was finding a better way to do things. But first, from the governor's desk to Hennepin County's emergency operations, we'll show you the rare steps taken to combat the cold. 12 News starts right now. Well, it hasn't happened in years. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Johnson. And I'm Alexandra Renslow. For the first time since 1997, a Minnesota governor has canceled school statewide. Governor Mark Dayton ordered all classes called off on Monday, citing the extreme cold. Temperatures on Monday are expected to reach 30 below zero in some parts of the state. Locally, Osseo area schools have been monitoring the weather, and it's possible that the district would have canceled classes anyway if the governor had not issued issued an executive order calling off school. However, some district employees will still report to work on Monday. Custodians and some maintenance folks who we need to keep our driveways cleared and the sidewalks cleared, the buildings heated and safe to get the building ready and warm for the next school day. The governor's order also means that after school and evening activities will also be canceled on Monday. And Hennepin County officials are not taking the extreme weather lightly either. Sonia Gowen shows us how they are getting prepared for the worst cold spell of weather we've had in more than a decade. Mike and Alex, it's kind of cold and windy out here right now, but we haven't seen anything yet. On Monday, we're expected to get record low temperatures. The folks here at Hennepin County say they'll be keeping an eye on things just in case there's an emergency. Bundle up and put on extra clothes. Monday is not only going to be brutal, but downright dangerous. Monday morning, we're looking at wind chills into minus 50 and below. So you're looking at five minutes um, for exposed skin for frostbite issues. These are temperatures in the metro. Sarah Stalker is a meteorologist for Hennepin County Emergency Management. She says we could break a temperature record runs. for January 6th. Previous record was set in 1912, and that temperature was minus 27. Sarah and other officials will be camped out here in the Hennepin County Situation uh -huh. Monitoring Station. Our main job uh, is to make sure that the response um, community in, in Hennepin County, fire, police, EMS, uh, the shelters, social service agencies, um, are ready and prepared for the onset of cold weather. On Monday, they'll hold a phone conference with other emergency responders to be prepared for the unexpected. We anticipate things like um, probably a water main or two will break. Uh, that frequently happens in the cold weather environments. Communication is also part of being prepared. Kilo Delta Zero Alpha Sierra X-ray. This is the county's radio room. Hennepin County Emergency Management, over. Uh, not all uh, communications will be done on a local level. It will also be done um, probably on a regional level. Hennepin County officials say they'll be checking the weather around the clock. They're not going to take any chances with the cruel joke Mother Nature is about to play on us. And not just cold temperature, but also very cold wind chills. Sonia Goins, 12 News. Because of the blowing snow and cold temperatures, Hennepin County issued what's known as a full call-out to plow drivers. That means all 53 operators had to report for duty. Officials say they'll work in this mode until they are confident that roads are safe for traffic. And here are some more cold, hard facts. The latest models show temperature readings dipping to a low of minus 24 on Monday. That's actually rather balmy compared to Groundhog Day back in 1996 when it reached 33 below zero. That's the lowest reading ever recorded in the Northwest Metro. And if you think this winter has been especially numbing, you're right. December went down as the fifth coldest on record dating back to the mid-1950s. In other news now, new technology and declining sales is blamed for a Golden Valley company going out of business. Archivers plans to close all its stores by mid-February, including its Maple Grove store. The company has 33 stores in 18 states. Archivers employs about a dozen people at each store. The company has been around for 14 years. It filed for bankruptcy protection last April. A local mayor followed through on a campaign promise today. Reporter Shannon Slatton explains what it is and why Robbinsdale's Mayor Murphy did it. On his campaign website, Murphy for Mayor, Reagan Murphy said as part of his commitment to Robbinsdale residents, he would donate his first year of salary to the proposed Lakeview Terrace Park Pavilion. I thought about maybe coming up with an idea or some way to show people that 
you know, I was going to put my money where my mouth was. And I thought this would be a good way to let people know that, you know, I'm serious about Robbinsdale. So Murphy gave the amount after taxes, more than $7,000 worth, to go toward funding the $400,000 pavilion project. Having grown up in Robbinsdale, the Lakeview Terrace Park is kind of our gem in, in, within our park system. A pavilion here at Lakeview Terrace would be a home for Robbinsdale City Band performances, as well as community events and weddings. It is as simple as that. I want to make it a better place to live. That's it. And for me, this is an important gesture to let people know that. In Robbinsdale, Shannon Slatten, 12 News. A small part of the money also went towards the Birdtown running race in May. Murphy hasn't decided yet if he'll donate the second year of his mayoral salary back to city projects. Well, forget about this bitter cold winter for just a moment. There is a family in Crystal that's actually embracing uh, it. They've converted their entire front yard into one big snow fort. One of the rooms we built with the tallest wall that we have. The Smith's front yard is part snow castle, part luge run, and the kids love it. The luge ride, of course, isn't as long as the Olympics, but it is plenty fast and icy. Look at them go. The kids help build it with all the snow that they remove from their driveway. The walls of the fort are at least 12 feet high, and it was Dad who did the heavy lifting. Our dad, he really likes to play outside with us. He really loves being outside, so he really helps us to get outside. And he, d he does a lot of the heavy lifting, as you can see. He's, he stands on the ladder and puts all these big blocks up, so he helps us a lot. Altogether, their mom says the kids put in 20 hours a week for the past four weeks into this winter front yard project. <laughs> Look at them go. Oh, wow. And uh, just for the record, when the word came down from the governor that there was no school on Monday, <laughs> a big cheer went up. I don't know if they'll be in the front yard when it's 15 below. They might but be back out on the loose. You never you know. Never know. <laughs> Coming up, a tribute to a former Brooklyn Center mayor. We look back at the legacy of Dean Nyquist. And later in sports, Wyzetta and Benil St. Margaret battle in a matchup of top 10 boys hockey teams. But first, the warmest part of your weekend will likely be Saturday morning. Then the bottom drops out. Brooklyn Center is remembering a former mayor who passed away on New Year's Day. Dean Nyquist served in the Minnesota legislature and for 13 years he served as Brooklyn Center's mayor. He was 78 years old and his legacy extends beyond local politics. At Brooklyn Center City Hall, there's good reason Dean Nyquist is a Hall of Famer. His fingerprints are all over this city. He was a Brooklyn Center cheerleader, you know, like all of us former mayors are, I guess. <laughs> but uh, just a really sweet man. During his 13 years as mayor, Nyquist turned over his paycheck to the city and also helped earn Brooklyn Center the distinction of All-America City in the 1980s. Which was very prestigious. There were only 10 cities in the states that got that award that year. Former Mayor Myrna Kragnitz served with Nyquist as charter members of the Rotary Club and says Nyquist's legacy includes starting the state's longest running prayer breakfast founded in Brooklyn Center more than 30 years ago. Every one of us that goes had seen him every year there and know it was because of Dean Nyquist we had the pro breakfast. A husband, father, and grandfather, Nyquist's work stretched beyond government. At the heart of Dean was finding a better way to do things. An attorney and mediator, Nyquist, as seen in this 12 News footage, helped establish numerous organizations devoted to resolving conflict among families and youth. In 1983, Nyquist founded the Peacemaker Center, which Pat Milton headed up for 10 years. Through that time, we helped kids that were getting in trouble with the law get back on track. And giving them a second chance was not only rewarding, but beneficial to the community in the process. Nyquist is the second Brooklyn Center mayor to pass in two months. In November, Nyquist's predecessor, former mayor Phil Cohen, died. Both men leave a legacy of community service. And I think that the city of Brooklyn Center is much better off today because that Cohen and Nyquist worked together once upon a time in a very, very positive way. A memorial service will be held for Dean Nyquist on Saturday evening at Maple Grove Covenant Church. Still ahead, a place where you'll find some of the most pampered pets on the planet. But first in sports, Park Center and Maple Grove battle in a close one on the wrestling mat. John Jacobson has that and more when we come back. 
the sports department's been hanging out in hockey arenas to warm up, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, that's that's about the case. And it was a great game good on Thursday night. Yeah. yeah, very good. Two very good teams. A lot of people there and fun times. Whitezetta and Benilde St. Margaret's boys hockey teams met three times last season. Whitezetta won two of the three matchups, including a win in the Section 6 AA title game. The Trojans and Red Knights meeting at Plymouth Ice Center to kick off 2014. A scoreless first, but some good chances. Matthew Freitag rings it off the pipe for Whitezetta. At the other end, Mark Kasky does the same. His wrister from the circle is a near miss. Pat O'Leary's team breaks free in the second period. Max Zimmer floats a perfect pass to Freitag. His wrist shot finds the net. It's 1-0 Trojans after two pretty good periods of hockey. And then Coach Ken Pauley's team gives up another here. Chandler Lindstrand's wrist shot deflects off Red Knights goalie Jalen Long and trickles in. Another look at it as it slips under Long's arm. Big goal for the defenseman Lindstrand. Ben Ill dancers. Ben Newhouse's pass right on target to Kasky, who tucks it in on a partial breakaway. The Red Knights pull within two to one. Goalie at Vaughn Aarons and the Wyzetta defense stand up to some late Ben Ill pressure, and they pull out a two to one win. Oh yeah, it means a lot. You know, these games are all playoff atmosphere, and we do our best to try to play like we're in the playoffs. And they did a good job. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's always a good game playing them. They got a lot of firepower, and I mean, we always, I mean, that's one game we look forward to in the year that we just, we love playing them. Tutino Grace's path to the state boys hockey tournament was blocked by eventual Class A champion St. Thomas Academy last season. That won't be the case this year as St. Thomas has opted up to Class AA. Eagles played host to the Cadets in Brooklyn Park Thursday. Tutino Grace's Blake Vagley does, digs the puck out of the corner. Kai Barber gets the shot on that, and then Vagley follows with a rebound goal. And it's 1-0 Eagles just over a minute into the game. Same score, second period, and good passing by the Cadets here. The puck ends up on the stick of Danny Wyrock, who scores, and it's a 1-1 game. Less than 30 seconds later, Cristiano Versich roofs the shot from the slot. The Cadets lead it 2-1. That's the score through two periods. Third period, and they add one more. Max Schmidt with the initial shot for the Cadets. Tommy Stang gets in position to score on the rebound. St. Thomas Academy skates past to Tino Grace 3-1. The Eagles are now 4-5-1. Now to wrestling, where District 279 rivals Park Center and Maple Grove hit the mat for a dual meet. Five matches in, teams tied at 12. Maple Grove sophomore Logan Dick ranked eighth at 138 pounds and shows why here. He reverses Park Center's Isaac Mansfield and eventually gets the pin at the 128 mark, giving Maple Grove the lead. At 152, Will Sewer puts George Berry in a cradle, rolls him over for the pin. After Park Center forfeits two matches, the Crimson hold the commanding lead 36-18 with just three matches to go. But at 195, Park Center's Julius Ogunte pins Tahi Nomain 50 seconds into the second period. And at 220, Park Center's Tommy Newell wins a back and forth match, putting Quinn Anderson to the mat, pinning him 54 seconds into the second period. The Pirates are down to six. They need a pin at heavyweight to earn a tie. But 110 into the heavyweight match, Maple Grove's Barry Dip rolls the Pirates' Emmanuel Abite to his back and gets the pin. And Maple Grove wins the match 42 to 30. Wyzetta's boys basketball team had won five out of six games heading into Thursday night, including a holiday tournament championship at Richfield. Trojans looking to stay hot against Buffalo. Will Benega nailed the catch and shoot three pointer for Wyzetta. The Trojans, though, trailing early in this game. Colin Almscheid answers with a three pointer for the Bison. They hold a 27 14 lead. Troy Luaji drives baseline. He'll score for Wysetta, but it's Buffalo in front at halftime by nine. Early in the second half, Olmscheid, nice pass to Andrew Iverson for two points. Benega answers for Wysetta with a long three-pointer here. And then Ty Galinsky will drop another three for the Trojans. And this one will cut Buffalo's lead down to seven points. But the Bison never fold in this game. Jonathan Sanger goes hard to the hoop and scores, gets the basket and the foul. Buffalo goes on to win 66 to 48. And that's a look at sports for today. All right, thanks, John. There are animal lovers and then there are animal lovers. And coming up next in Weekend Showcase, we'll show you the extreme some local animal owners are taking to showcase their pets.
Hennepin County Libraries will be open extended hours starting on Sunday. It's a plan that's been in the works since last fall. The idea is to meet increasing customer demand and to streamline the opening and closing times among the libraries. Most libraries, including Brookdale, Maple Grove, Golden Valley, and Plymouth, will have expanded hours. They will open at 9 o'clock Monday through Saturday, noon on Sunday. Last year, library patrons checked out nearly 16 million items and that number is expected to climb with the longer hours this year. And if you're looking for something to do this weekend in the nice warm indoors, you might want to head to St. Paul's River Center for some fun and fur. It is the annual Lando Lakes Kennel Club Dog Show, and dog owners from all across the country are hoping their dog takes home first place. Cassie Bonstrom has more in this week's Weekend Showcase. Judy Mensos grooms 10 dogs a day at a Robbinsdale shop. But Thursday's job was a personal one, getting her standard poodle Liam ready for this weekend's dog show. For the actual show, it takes um, three to five hours. Preparations include shaving, washing, drying, and then more brushing. When Liam's finally ready, he'll join hundreds of other dogs and dog lovers at St. Paul's River Center. We have about 1,700 dogs entered, all different breeds. Big dogs, small dogs, and everything in between. Each dog is judged on the breed's standards like size, shape, and coat. It's an expensive hobby. Winners get ribbons, official photos, and bragging rights. Oh yeah, treats too. Spectators are welcome at the show. It's cold outside, good place to bring the kids. There's even tours offered for newbies. Learn about the world of dog shows and make some new friends. I had your sloppy card. In St. Paul, Cassie Bonstrom, 12 News. If you are interested in attending the dog show, it's happening all day Saturday and Sunday. And for more information about the event, you can go to our website. That's 12.tv. I can't see a dog show without thinking of the Christopher Guest movie. <laughs> Best in a show. <laughs> a lot of fun to see those dogs but you, and their you, owners. You don't have to really like dogs to go to the show. I mean, no. it, it's, it's very interesting to watch uh, what they do. Entertaining, yeah. I would say, too. Yeah, and all different <laughs> sizes and kinds of dogs. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That does it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay with us. Community Corner is coming up next. Have a great weekend, everyone. We'll see you again Monday.